What's up, everybody? It is your doctor, Dr. Remy LeBeau, coming at you once again from the x Lair with today's treatment for your uncurable disease, the X-Men Statue Withdrawal Syndrome. Doctors around the world are working to help to permanently alleviate you of these horrible symptoms that you have to endure as a result of being addicted to X-Men statues. Fortunately, because they haven't come up with a cure, I am able to provide you with your daily, weekly, bi-weekly, bi-monthly, however often you check out my YouTube channel, uh, treatment schedule that, you know, subdues some of the symptoms um, and makes it easier for you to go on. You poor people. Today's treatment is this very awesome statue of Banshee. The first statue of Banshee that's, that was ever produced by any statue producer um, in a form that is just like legendary. It's just a legendary form uh, uh, for this statue. It could have just been like a simple standing museum pose, but you know, Bowen Designs, Randy Bowen et al. decided to do something special. They decided to do like a flying pose with the guy and just, um, and then have like the sentinel hand you know, kind of as a base, sort of, you know, grabbing for him, trying to bring him down, um, which is really, really awesome and fantastic and unique. Um, this statue was uh, sculpted by Jason Smith digitally. It was released in 2011, and um, I forget how many there are. I'm gonna, I'm about to check how many there are. Um, there, this is number 77 of 500. So there are actually only, there are actually only 499 of these because as some of you know, I got one of these converted into a more modern or like a late 90s X-Men version of, of Banshee. You can actually see it partly up there. Hello, 80 or 90s Banshee. Um, I've actually posted a video and a blog post for that one already, so check it out if you're curious about it. Um, that one represents a version of Banshee that's a little bit closer uh, for me um, to my heart for the character because that was the time that he uh, and Emma Frost started the Massachusetts Academy for Gifted Youngsters um, in which Generation X lived and trained the young generation of X-Men of the 90s one of my favorite sort of young teams because you know it was they were introduced at the time that I was reading comics and and I immediately formed a connection with them and loved them they have great characters Monet St. Croix uh, is one of the important characters that came out of that period she's been an x-factor all these years uh, Jubilee was part of that team she wasn't introduced to that team but she was part of the team uh, Husk uh, uh, Sam Guthrie Cannonball's sister uh, Paige Guthrie was also introduced in that book. Um, a few other characters that were killed off, like um, uh, Skin and Sink. Uh, two good characters that were killed, unfortunately. But um, th there, there was some cool stuff that went on in that in that story in that in that book. And um, I think what was really great great is that Chris Bacalo designed all the characters, and Chris Bacalo is one of my favorite X artists as well. There was a lot that I liked about that that whole run and uh, and so Banshee kind of has the very strong connection to that era of the X-Men of younger X-Men <clears throat> and so I love Banshee I think mainly because of that time but you know beyond that he's just an important character in the X-Men universe he was introduced during um, you know in giant sized X-Men number one where you had Colossus introduced and we had Storm and um, him and Thunderbird and Sunfire. Uh, so, I mean, he, he obviously goes back to like the 70s, so like super important times, and is just a great character. Uh, this statue is a fantastic representation of him. Um, you can just see, I love this design for the costume. It's like wonderful. It's like green and yellow. It's very simple. There isn't much to it, but what there is a lot to are the wings like the striped yellow and black wings, which are freaking awesome. And and they just make the design uh, of of him just so uh, dynamic. You know, it just, they're spread out. Anytime they're spread out, it just, it gives it so much, 
life um, as like a as a larger than life character that can fly you know it just kind of puts him into that sort of context immediately uh, as like a flying character as like having this attribute that is unique to him and, and only a few others you know so it's really great and it's captured fantastically visually in this character design and obviously visually fantastically in this statue um, let's talk about this statue uh, we've got the first hand sentinel debris base the second of which is the magneto action statue which i've posted stuff about on my on my blog already so if, if you are curious about that one and don't know what i'm talking about look up action magneto statue and it's like a very cool i think it was, it was also sculpted digitally by jason smith so it makes sense that they would use like a similar base for both of these um, but that's a really great statue and these i think display really well i currently have him uh, the variant, the custom variant of him displayed up here with Cable. And so both of them have de Sentinel debris. Cable has the uh, Sentinel head as his base. So uh, Sentinel debris bases are becoming more prevalent in the, uh, in the Bowen full-size statue products. So And there's like a bishop coming out soon that has a Sentinel head as well. So there, it's like it's becoming like a really nice set. So if you get this one to kind of display with those, Magneto and Cable, if you can get it, and Bishop, it, it, it would look really cool. As far as what I personally have done with this statue is I have put him in a display with the giant-sized X-Men team, which you can see represented here um, in this very cool Marvel Tales cover by Todd McFarlane, my favorite freaking artist ever to draw comics thank you mcfarland for existing i love you um and you can see it's like uh storm colossus wolverine nightcrawler phoenix uh, cyclops and here's banshee right here so it's just like he's part of this team and so this is exactly this is the exact team i have set up with my my six or seven statues um in a in a setup that i have yet to post i think i don't think i've posted a photo of that display it but I will I will eventually um, and so he just works perfectly in that display uh, here's another great image of that team um, this is a variant cover of Uncanny X-Men number 500 by Alex Ross um, and here you have Banshee looking fantastic and of course Phoenix in the scent in the middle and you got Cyclops and Wolverine and Nightcrawler and Storm and Colossus it's just a beautiful cover. This is a Dynamic Forces uh, variant signed by Mr. Alex Ross himself. Alex Ross, the god of painted ex, um, comic art, who just elevated the art, I think, to a level that nobody ever had before him. So just thank goodness for Alex Ross and for this cover. <laughs> Love that guy. But this cover represents the same team that I have Banshee here um, uh, displayed in. And it works great, and uh, you know I think there's a variety of ways you can pose this guy with other statues. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the same way that I've I've included him because this this look does kind of transcend um, that particular era and can be used in a variety of eras. Or if like I said, the Sentinel base works for other Sentinel debris bases statues. And that could just be a whole set in and of itself. But you know what? This statue works all by itself because it's super impressive it's dynamic it's like big it's super big I mean, you can see how big the frame had to be for this video because it's so tall hey there banshee um and um i mean it would look really nice in a place where you could kind of check out all different angles for it because there's so much detail on the base on the back as well and also you know like the back of him looks really great with like the wings and and or even like on the side like this like displayed maybe from this angle would work really well there's just like there's so much to the statue to see from every angle that there's just a lot of possibility for it for its display uh, potential um so uh the base i've already mentioned is very cool it's got this metallic uh purple very nice it's got like claw marks from wolverine here um it's great it's like it's it's fantastic and then you've got banshee in a very nice flying pose sticking out he's not completely 
like straight up and it's fine because he's flying so it makes sense that he would be flying off to the side slightly so that never really was an issue for me and I think it's just a, a design choice um, he's got the yellows which are shaded nicely with some with some darker I think maybe orange like a light dark orange <laughs> if that makes any sense and then you've got of course a lot of green here which is which is um, shaded with some dark black or gray or something and it looks really nice so the fact that you have so much green and yellow um, works really nicely as it does in like the you know like the Phoenix design I love that they use like these two colors a lot in X-Men um, uh, designs the green and yellow because they work really well together and uh, and also like it's just really nicely representative of like super important like the the Phoenix saga is a super important saga and like these colors are iconic um, for that are, are like iconographic uh, staples of that storyline of that era so you know more green more yellow more excitement from me and other X-Men fans um, <clears throat> and then beyond that um, you've got the collared shirt which is very cool and what's really impressive is like his face his face looks great He's Sean Cassidy, he is Banshee, and he's like yelling. His power is like this sonic scream, which is what allows him to fly. You know, it's like he uses sound waves to fly. And it and it all uh, it all emanates from his mouth. You know, so he's got his mouth open, he's like ready to yell, or he's in the midst of yelling, and it's freaking awesome. He looks like angry, and he's just like, the, the face and the hair is sculpted beautifully, and it's painted really nicely as well. Like the eyes, the hair, the face, lovely. Um, <clears throat> great statue to have if you are a fan of this character. Just a fantastic uh, representation of him, and um, there's just I just can't say enough good things about him. Um, uh, this is the sort of statue I think that it's starting to become a little scarce, like, and it's starting to go up in price. I think it costs like two fifty to three hundred bucks, maybe a little bit more. So uh, eBay would probably be the best place to find him, or I don't think there are any more online retailers that still have him. Uh, if you are able to find one, then you're lucky. You're lucky, and I hope you do find one. But it's possible that there there just aren't any more of these um, available uh, on the primary market. So the secondary market is where you'd have to look, and that's generally where prices start to go up. So right now it's June of 2013. If it's something that you want and you haven't found it yet, I would go for it. Um, so as far as Banshee goes, Banshee, poor guy, is dead now. He's been killed in the Marvel Universe. Um, and it all happened in this very important storyline, which which I think is very important, but many people obviously don't like too much um, because it involves a lot of retconning, which is retroactive continuity, going back into into continuity that was already established and kind of telling a different story within it. Um, and here, this is the first cover. It's basically the giant-sized X-Men cover, but they're all like, you know, they're all basically zombies. Like... Um, uh, and this is a cover by Mark Silvestri, and I think Mark Silvestri actually drew a couple of these issues, so that's really cool. Mark Silvestri is like a classic X artist. But it started here, where Gabriel Christopher Summers was introduced, the third Summers brother. He's pissed off for reasons I won't go into, and as a result of that, he causes a lot of havoc. And part of that havoc results in Mr. Cassidy here dying. And here you have like this cover of issue number three of six with poor Mr. Cassidy dead, completely and utterly gone. And um, and it happens here. This is like a panel from like the last panel of like the last issue where a plane is basically, a, pla a plane basically crashes into Banshee. Um, and that's the end of Banshee, he's dead. He tried to save a lot of people and he failed and died. Um, and that's, that's it, that's the end of Banshee. Um, we haven't seen him since, except in uh, Necrotia, which was like this weird story where like Celine, this like the former Black Queen of the Hellfire, Hellfire Club, like brought a bunch of mutants back to life um, as basically zombies, and they attacked like Utopia, which was like the new uh, X Men nation that was Asteroid M that uh, that was floating off the coast of San Francisco, and so Banshee was one of like these. Um, these like uh zombie warriors for Celine that she was controlling and 
and it was kind of uh, it was disturbing. It was a disturbing storyline. But that's all. That's the only time we've seen him. Um, his daughter Teresa Cassidy, who was part of X Factor and then became like some weird thing I forget, um, actually took on the moniker of Banshee. So she is now Banshee. She's Banshee too. Um, so it doesn't look like Sean's coming back, folks. Which is good. You know, characters should remain dead uh, when Marvel or any um, superhero story you know uh, powerhouse production factory <laughs> is going to uh, you know when they kill off a, a character they need to they need to make sure the character remains dead in order for them to have credibility in the next big story that they're going to tell so Sean Cassidy had a good run loved the character but it's this time came his time came it's time to close the book on the guy and leave him dead I'm just happy that I get to have this really cool statue of him. I don't think there'll be other Banshee statues produced. So um, I'm just really happy that this one was produced and that I got to get a hold of him and also got to get a hold of a second one, which I got to um, create a custom version of. There it is, custom version. Eventually I'll do a video comparing the two just to kind of give you like a better idea of what was done with the other one and like the differences between the two. And basically just to provide you some more Banshee eye candy. I mean, why not, right? Banshee Eye Candy rocks! Alright folks, thank you so much for checking out my video and my blog. My blog is X-Men Statues of Future Past .blogspot.com Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel, which you're probably checking out right now. It is Dr. Remy LeBeau's x -Lair. And as always, X in the box. Bam! Because ain't nobody checking me. I'll catch you all very soon. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.